Which value of R represents data with a strong negative linear correlation between two variables? This problem is basically just testing to see if you can remember what linear regression is and what the R value means. So if you recall, you want for, for a relationship to be linear, you want the R value to be as close to 1 as possible. So for example, if R is um, close to, let's suppose R is between negative 1 and 0, we will call this a negative correlation. This would be a negative correlation. And if R is between 0 and 1, let me just write this a little differently here. I want to write negative 1 is less than R is less than 0. So that's what we'll call a negative correlation. If R is instead between 0 and 1, then we'll call that a positive correlation. And if R is less than negative 1, or if R is greater than 1, we'll say this is a nonlinear. Nonlinear correlation. And then we, it doesn't mean we can't use a regression model, it just means we wouldn't use a linear regression model. It means they're correlated in some other way. Maybe it looks like a parabola, maybe it's exponential. Really, we don't know what kind of relationship the two variables have. But if it's linear, it'll be either close to negative 1 or 1. If it's close to 0, if it's in between, if the R value equals 0, so that's somewhere in between here, R equals 0, then we would say they're not correlated at all, that there's a weak correlation or no correlation between the variables. So to say that there's a negative correlation doesn't mean there's no correlation, it means that it's negative. And let me just give you a quick little, you know, um, real life example on this. Suppose I plotted height over time. Um, no, maybe that's not such a good example because people don't grow linearly. Um, suppose I gave you car sales per month. Then every month, so this is time on the x-axis and this is car sales. If I sell the same amount of cars every month, then this would be pretty much a nice linear correlation. So the data would all fall roughly on that line and this might have an R value that's roughly equal to 1. On the other hand, you could think of something as having a negative correlation if its independent variable fell over time. Like um, video rentals, video rentals, video rentals over time, right? Everybody has Netflix now or they download things online. They don't really necessarily go to the to the video store anymore so over time maybe those come down linearly and then this would have an R value of roughly negative one so this is a positive correlation and this is a negative correlation they're both very much correlated if all the data falls on this line or on this line then those are strong correlations so negative doesn't mean weak negative means that as the as the independent variable goes up the dependent variable goes down um, okay, that's probably a little more detail than we need to specifically solve this problem, but I just really want to emphasize the point in case you see a similar problem that for things to be non-correlated, that really happens when the R value is close to zero. Okay, so we can eliminate choice three, right? Because we have a strong negative linear correlation doesn't mean that it's close to zero. And it's a negative correlation, so it's going to be a negative number because that corresponds to the slope. So we can eliminate 4 because it's a positive number. And now we have to choose between 1 and 2. And the temptation is to choose 1 because it's closer to negative 1, right? It's only 7 hundredths away from negative 1. And 0.89 is 11 hundredths away from negative 1. But really the answer is 2. And the reason for that is if r is less than negative 1, then we would use a nonlinear relationship. We wouldn't, even though this, you look at this and it could look like it's kind of linear, but we probably would have a better, um, a better way to represent it that's not a linear method. So for linear method, we'd rather have something that's more like this. Two is the best choice.